All right, we got to do it. You got to take us to Toronto because this is the only team that matters in the whole deadline, it seems like. So I have them, when we're looking at them as buyers or sellers, I have them as buyers or sellers or maybe both, but also potentially neither. It's about right. I have no idea what to expect from them. I think Gary Trent Jr. is clearly their most likely player to be traded because of his player option that he's going to decline. Um, they're also not, you know, woefully... Uh, or they don't have like a ton of flexibility under the tax. They're about, they're fewer than 5 million within the tax. That's something to keep in mind as you look at trades. Um, I don't, I, what I will say is I still view Pascal Siakam along with Scotty Barnes as untouchable. I don't think a Siakam trade, if they do explore it, it's just something to me that happens over the off season. I'd be floored if it happens in the middle of the year. And I'm just wondering, could that hold up the trade market at all? Where it's some teams that have been linked to Ananobi, like let me use Phoenix as an example. I think Pascal Siakam makes way more sense for them. And it's just between them having the link to Pascal Siakam and then also like, oh, are we waiting on the Kevin Durant trade demand? Could that just stop business a little bit at all at the trade line? I'm, that's galaxy braining this shit, but just food for thought. Uh, I, uh, so my question for them, or I have questions. There's the easy low hanging fruit one of, will they entertain offers for OG Ananobi and Fred Van Fleet in addition to Gary Trent Jr.? But if they're not, are they like if they decide to stand pat? Can they add shot making depth and a big? Are they actually even willing to act like buyers? Do they even view moving Gary Trent Jr. as a sell job? And so, can you use Gary Trent Jr. to fill any of those holes? Most likely the big because you're actually losing shot making in Gary Trent Jr. And so, what would be your what would you do if you're the Raptors at this trade deadline? Let's start there. Yeah, I mean, I think, and I've felt this way for a while. Um, the idea, I get it that, you know, Ananobi is going to come due for more money. Siakam's not that far. Like, there are guys that they're going to have to pay more, even if you exclude Van Vliet and Trent. I don't like the blow it up route that you that I've seen. Um, I, I get it. Like, guys just become more expensive, and so it's not really realistic to say, like, let's just hold on to these, to all of our Project 6 9 guys. And they'll just all get better. And, and then it'll, we'll be great. We just fill in around them with what we need, which are like ones and fives. It's, it, that's guys to make plays, guys that can defend the paint and as conventional centers. Um, that said though, like to me, the, the cleanest path has long seemed to be Trent. You got to move Trent. Cause I think he's sort of a replaceable type of player and, and I don't think you want to pay what he's going to cost on his next deal. And I think I would move Van Vliet too, just really on the, the thinking that there's a chance I just lose both these guys for nothing. And there's also a chance I have to overpay to beat the market when they're, when they become free agents this summer to keep them. So like, I don't really like either of those options. Um, so I would, my, my like base plan would be, I don't think I'm trading Ananobi unless I get, unless some idiot comes along and offers five first round picks for him, which is never <laughs> <gonna happen. laughs> even if three of them are fake. Uh, and I'm not trading Siakam and I'm not trading Scotty Barnes, but I'm trying to get what I can for Van Fleet and Trent and whatever that does to my season this year. Fine. I don't think the Raptors are in position to really like care that much about that. And then I just hope that with the flexibility I've earned or the new pieces I've gotten back, I can figure out a way to make project six, nine still sort of work, but have a real point guard that can break down a half court defense and have a center that can anchor a more conventional half court defense. Like that's, I'm just trimming off the pieces. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to keep at rates. I want to pay to keep them. And then I'm, I'm holding on to pretty much everything else. The one thing I'm wondering if I disagree with at this point, we both agree that GTJ is the most likely player to be traded, right? Yeah, I think so. I'm almost wondering, is OG Ananobi now the second most likely player to be traded? Just because the noise has been so loud on him. It could be fueled by other teams. But like the fact that we've now heard reports about him being unhappy or that the Raptors are listening to offers, like we're not talking about one-sided territory anymore. The whole mystery team offers three first-round picks and everyone knows it was the fucking Knicks and now it's finally identified. Like that, that's not the level of rumors we're dealing with anymore. I don't know that I would predict that he'd be traded. I want to make it clear, but he kind of seems to me like if I were to rank of the four players that are talked about the most in this vein, I almost might put him two ahead of Fred Van Fleet. And I'm the thing with Van Fleet, he's so important to your shot creation because you just, if you get rid of him, how do you go about replacing that? Right. I, I think you're not going to have cap spaces off season. 
And I think they probably missed an opportunity. Like the fact that they kind of just stood pat or made moves on the margins this past off season, I think was a like a really like a fucking failure on their part. We might've seen this team be a lot better had they done anything to address these glaring needs that we knew they all had. Uh, I don't think they will be a buyer to be clear. So like, I don't if they don't do anything major, I don't think it's going to be like, you know, if they don't sell, I don't think that they're just going to turn around and be like, Oh, well we went after and we went out and got, you know, a big, or we went out and got a, another shot creator. I'm just, where are you at though on the OG stuff? Do you still think he's the third most likely to be traded behind Van Vliet and, and GTJ? I think maybe, but there are a couple key factors independent of all the rumors that really do sort of weigh in favor of him being the second or even even more likely than Trent potentially. And 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 those are one, the longer you wait, the closer he gets to that player option in 24, 25, or really the summer of 24. Yeah. And the lower his value gets because then you're talking about just less time with him on your team if you're the acquiring team and 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 closer to having to pay him like God knows what on his next deal. The other thing is just the reality of the market, which is how many times have we talked about Ananobi? Like it's there, like there are not a lot of teams looking to move a player like him or of his quality. And there are a million teams that want him. So it's possible that whatever, you know, it's possible that this is the most right now today or within the next week is the most you're ever going to get for him. So like Great. that alone is compelling to me. If I do think, if I'm not comfortable potentially with paying him, you know, 30 million a year or whatever it is going forward on his next deal, I think maybe there's a case to be made for like, just keep it really simple and sell an asset at its absolute highest value. And for Ananobi, I think that's probably right now. Um, Cause it's hard for me to imagine him playing so much better as he nears the end of this contract to where now you're talking about an even bigger return than three firsts, right? Like, cause he get it's just it, those two things. The arrows are kind of moving in different directions as he gets closer to that to the end of his deal. So I, for sure, I could see him being, you know, the second most likely guy. And I, I just, I, I have such a bad sense of what they're going to do with Van Vliet. You know, I yeah. do. You, it doesn't. It Trent's clear. Trent is much clearer because I just don't think he's as integral to what they're doing. But Van Vliet is really hard to figure out. Not only like what can they get for him, but like, where does he really make a lot of sense that has what it would take to get him? I just, I don't have a good answer for that. And what also complicates it is I think with some other players, you could say, well, there's going to be some cap space in the market, but if they want to leave, you could broker a sign and trade. It's not the same with Van Fleet because some of the rebuilding teams, like let's just use Orlando as an example, like they can justify just paying him. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be like, Oh, Van Fleet is not going to go to a team that's on, sort of a more gradual timeline. And so that makes it even harder. And just how, again, how important he is to an offense that's already super shallow when it comes to shot creators there in the, the half court. So I, I don't have a great feel for what they do with him either. Uh, I for so long thought that he and GTJ were the most likely players to be moved, but I kind of think Ananobi's entered that fold ahead of him now. I want to ask you this. Which teams come to mind should actually go all in? on an OG and an OB trade. If you had your druthers and you're running them. And can I preface this by saying, why do people think that the Memphis Grizzlies are one of them? What does he do to address their biggest weaknesses? I know that, like the idea of having a bigger wing. Okay. But in terms of their half court offense, three point volume and even three point efficiency. Like if you want to drum that up in the half court is OG and an OB that guy. I mean, of so is this limited to the teams that could actually get him? I'm, well, I mean, like, you know, the, I, a team that could actually make an all-in offer for like, which team should be making the viewing? Oh, this is Adenobi at his peak value, and they should be willing to pay. I mean, it's harder than you'd think if you're trying to limit it because, like, Cleveland, Cleveland, he fits the position Cleveland needs, but they don't have like they just right. they can't do it. He is, um, so. I, I just don't think it should be the Grizzlies. I don't I understand that. it necessarily for the Knicks. I was going to say, why aren't we mentioning the Warriors? Like Kamingo, Wiseman, and Picks? Yeah, I think the, the Warriors, I guess, I'm trying to think what the reason not to do that would be. And it would really just be faith in Kaminga being like, you know, in three years, something like what Ananobi is now. I don't, I, mean, I don't know how realistic that is, but if I'm just making the counter argument. Um, yeah, the team like the Warriors... A team like, let's see, I'm just looking at the top of the standing. Like, 
could you talk yourself into Atlanta? I mean, if Atlanta had anything it could give up, like That's just be a better this year. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> can they trade Trey Young? Let's do that. Let's trade Trey Young. For, um, no, I don't know. It's, I think it's harder. I don't, if, if I wouldn't totally rule out Memphis though, as I'm thinking about it, just because I think he's just way better at everything than Dylan Brooks. Um, so I think if you're concerned about having to pay Dylan Brooks on his next deal, there's some like renegotiate and extend stuff out there about him right now. Um, it's kind of a similar situation to Ananobi, and I just think Ananobi's better. But then if you're also giving up a whole bunch of draft capital, right. I don't know if he's that much better. Yeah, that that's tough. I don't know. The Warriors make sense. I mean, just just go get a guy and throw caution to the wind over the next three years, basically. Why not? I'm just surprised that they haven't even been met because everyone's saying they need a bigger wing, and now all of a sudden OG Ananobi's out there, and you have – I would say you have the assets to make a competitive offer for him, right? Yeah. I think if you have both Wiseman and, and I talk about Wiseman, like he's a huge asset, no, but no, I think Kaminga, <laughs> Kaminga and a couple firsts on the table. I mean, that's so who, who says no Wiseman Kaminga. You might need another salary in there, but they could get to it. So Wiseman Kaminga is the basis. And then a 2026 and 2028 first round pick who says no for OG Ananobi. Oh, I really do like Kaminga. I think here we go. He's the new Wiseman. <laughs> no, no. I think the I think Toronto should do that. Um, it, it, for all the reasons we just said about like Ananobi, the the concerns you have. I don't think either of the teams would do that. Uh, only because I have to believe Toronto thinks it can get those like three firsts or even more, and not have to take and not have to take on, I, I just don't know. That's a good trade. I don't know who says no. It's not, I guess that's a signal of why it's not a bad offer. Hopefully we cut that up and put that out so that we can get the answer from, from the masses. Yeah. Somebody tell us that's a hard question.